Hi my lovelies, I'm Jen from Crifty Crafty and I am teaming up with the wonderful Tonic Studios to bring you some of their new SVGs to show you how you get them into Cricut Design Space, how you get them cut ready and how you then put them together. So today we're looking at the Out for Lunch gift box SVG and these are fantastic because you can really tailor them to your own specification. So if we look at the SVG, you'll see we've got some SVG folders. We've also got the instruction sheet and the instruction sheets are great because they go through and they tell you all the SVG pieces you need. It shows you what everything's going to look like cut out and it also takes you through and gives you the instructions as well. There's also a readme document. And in that, it just tells you the terms and conditions of your purchase and that fully assembled projects can be sold under this license agreement. So what I like to do is to get all of my files and put them in my pictures. So I'm going to open up the extra elements first and I'm just going to hold down my shift key and my arrow and I'm just going to copy them across to my pictures. So if I open up my pictures folder, I'm just going to paste those across. It's just so that they're easy for me to find and I don't have to go through and try and do everything in design space. Also, because these are folders, if you try and open the folders in design space, it won't let you. So you need to extract the individual elements. I can then open the next one. And you'll see there's panels one and two. So we're going to get panels one first. And again, I'm just gonna copy that, open up my pictures and paste that across. I can now open decorative panels two. And again, copy and paste that to my pictures. I'm then gonna open up this one, copy and paste those across. And then this one and do the same. I can now open up Design Space. So we're in our Design Space canvas and I'm going to go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse, and one at a time, I can now start bringing these elements in. Because they are SVGs, they'll come in as a cut and all we need to do is, I like to keep the image name the same, but I always give it a tag and it's so it's easy to find. We can then select upload and that is then in our uploads. So I'm gonna go through and do that for every single one of those elements. Once they're in my uploads, I can then select them all and you'll see that we've got multiples here and I've done that for a reason to be able to show you the difference between score lines and perforated lines. We can then insert those to our canvas. So the first thing I want you to look at is the difference in the lines on the actual box. So you'll see that these are solid lines and these are perforated lines. If you like to have a solid score, then all you need to do is come over to the layers panel and where it says basic cut, and you can see it's the score line, you're just going to change that to a score. And that will then score those lines for you. Now, if you're like me and you like a perforated cut as your score line, then you don't need to change these. So with a perforated cut, it will the machine will cut them where it should score them and you get a nice, even, crisp fold. But you only want to do that on the perforated lines. If you've got the solid lines, then you do need to change them to a score. I prefer working with perforated cuts, so I'm going to keep those. You also need to make sure that the file comes in as the correct size and each element has got a line. So if we look at these ones here, it tells us correct if the line measures six inches, which it does. Same on this one, correct if the line measures eight inches, which it does. Compl 
So you want to check all of your elements and make sure that they are measured correctly. We then just need to delete those line layers. So if we look at our layers panel, we can find where it says correct if this line measures and we can then simply delete that. And I'm going to do that for each of those elements. So I'm going to select just that layer and delete. So we've got our actual box pieces, which we don't need to do anything to. And then we've got all of our embellishment pieces here. So these are great because they are so easy to change. So these are the two sides of our box. And then these are the two lower sections. So if we just look at the picture, we've got our two side pieces and then our lower piece. And then here we've got lower pieces and then top pieces, which is this area here and this area here. Now, if I am doing the butterfly box, I'm going to keep this exactly as it is. But if I want to do, say, a patterned piece, all I'm going to do is duplicate that. And I'm going to select each of the layers and come down to the bottom of my layers panel to contour. And I'm just going to hide all contours and that will then give me that solid shape and I can do that for each of them. So I can then cut this out in a patterned cardstock or a patterned paper or if I wanted to I could slice my own design into that area. The same with this one, we've already got the lower pieces on the butterfly box but this one here is for this box here but I don't want to do that one so for me I would simply click on each of those layers, open up my contour and again I would just hide all contours. And because I've already got the lower pieces in the butterfly, I can actually just delete these ones here because I don't need them for this box. I am going to keep these though because I'm going to have them as a coloured cardstock behind my cutout one. So they are then going to sit like that and these are going to be a solid cardstock. I've then got some embellishment pieces so I can choose whether to cut those or not. I'm going to keep the little flowers and love circles but the rainbow and everything else I'm not going to cut so I can just select those and delete them. My butterflies I want to keep but what I also want to do is if I just select one and duplicate it and I get rid of that cut because I don't need it, if I select that and open up my contour I can hide all my contours so I've got a solid butterfly So I can then have a two layered butterfly and I'm then going to duplicate that so I've got three of them. I don't want the leaves so I'm going to delete that. And I do want the little tag but I don't want this piece here. So again I'm just going to delete that. So what I now need to do is colour my pieces so they cut out on separate mats. So these butterflies I'm going to make purple. And these ones, if I draw around them, I can change them all at once. So I'm going to make those a yellow. These, let's make them a blue. And if I want half in one colour and half in the other, all I need to do is select that layer, ungroup it, so they become individual layers, and then... I can change the colours. I'm going to make these a orange. My butterfly panels I'm going to make, let's do a red. And then my under panels I'm going to make those a, oh I don't know, a pink. 
Now I need to make sure that any score or perforated cut lines are attached. So at the moment, if we look at our layers panel, they are only grouped. So when we go to make it, the lines are going to be on a separate mat. So we must make sure if we come down to the bottom of our layers panel and we select attach, that we attach them so that when they go to the mat, they stay exactly as you can see them. So always go through and any areas that you have got a score or a perforated cut, you must make sure that they are attached. Now we know that these are the minimum size they need to be, but I can in fact make them larger if I want to. I always select everything. I align and center and then I can make them larger. So for example, if I wanted to make the box 10 inches in width, I can, and I'm gonna make sure that everything else becomes the correct size. For today though, I'm just going to cut them as they are meant to be cut. We can then go to make it, and you'll see we've got all our individual layers there. We can go to continue, I'm using my maker today, but of course you can use any of the explore machines. And then you need to browse all materials to select the appropriate cut settings. I'm using all tonic card today. I'm using some tonic pearlized card. I'm using some tonic glitter card, and I'm also using some tonic classic card as well. And on my machine, for all of those, I use the craft board setting. However, my machine does like to cut heavy. So normally with a glitter card, I would cut it on a glitter card setting. And then for the rest of the tonic card, I normally do a medium or a heavy card stock. It's always worth doing a test cut of a little heart and star of about half an inch because if it can cut those out, then you know you've got the appropriate cut setting. So as you can see, I've cut out all my pieces and there's just a few things I want to do before I po start putting this together. So with some of my classic white cardstock, all I've done is got some shimmer powders and then some water to create these beautiful effects. And they're just gonna add a little bit of colour through my cutout pieces. So I've got some Lilac Waterfall, some Sunray Crozette, and some Cherry Bomb. I've got some water in my Nouveau spray bottle and I'm just gonna spray some water. Now you don't need to squeeze these bottles, you literally just tap them. And then I just want to add a little bit more water just to spread that around. And then we're just gonna let that dry until it ends up like something like that. The other thing is my glitter butterflies. Now these are gonna be bent up. So you are going to see the sides and the back of them. Only a little bit, but I do want those pieces colored. And if you look at my under pieces of my butterflies, because it's white core, you can see just a very thin line of that white peeking through. And I like to actually remove those. So I've got three pens here to help me. I've got the Nouveau glitter markers, I've got Aquaflow, and I've got some of the new alcohol markers as well. So what I do is I just use my glitter marker to come in and first of all, just go around the outer edge and remove that very obvious white line that's going all the way through. Now for any hard to reach areas, I either use my Aquaflows or I use the fine tip on my alcohol pens. For those of you that don't know how to use Aquaflows, you'll see there's a safety rim there. If we open it up, we're gonna remove that safety rim and that can then go in the bin. We're gonna screw this back on and we're going to remove the lid and then just make sure that that is nice and tight and this will prevent any of the ink leaking out. We can get a little bit out 
And because this is a nice fine nib, we can then get in all those hard to reach areas. I'm then just going to come in and just colour in the back. And I could use ink if I wanted to, but on this occasion, I'm just going to use my Aquaflow just to come in and cover up the white so that when I create that 3D effect with my butterflies, you're not going to see that white peeking through. So before I actually start putting my box together, I need to come in and glue all my panel pieces together. So now all my butterflies, my panel pieces, all my little embellishments, I'm going to come in and glue those. I'm a huge fan of tonic glue. I use all of their glues and also glue dots as well. But my favourite has to be the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And I love this because it's got a nice fine nib. Once I've smoothed my glue on, what I like to do is just come in with my finger and just smooth it out so that when I put this down, I'm not going to have any glue sort of spurting out everywhere. So I'm just going to gently smooth that all over and then come in and glue that to that panel. And then what I like to do is put everything under a heavy book just for a couple of minutes so that it really has time to adhere. So before I put my box together, I just want to glue my panels on. It will make it a lot easier for me. So I'm just going to add some glue to there. Go right to the edges because you want to make sure that you glue it completely and then just smooth the edges out. You don't need to smooth the rest out, but it's always worth if you're going right to the edge, just smoothing it out. So again, you don't end up with glue kind of squirting everywhere. I then sort of leave that just for a few minutes and normally I put them under something heavy again so that they really have got time to just stick. So we're now going to put our box together. So we've got our two larger pieces which are the sides of our box and then we've got our two smaller pieces which are the front and the back. So we're going to start with the two side pieces first and you want to come in and fold all of your score lines. And as I say, I much prefer perforated cuts because you do get a really nice crisp fold. Yes, you can see through them, but to be honest, especially with some builds, by the time you've done all your panels and everything, you can't really see them. I'm going to turn them over and I'm going to glue these two squares together so that our sides can then stand up. So we're going to glue these two on top of each other. And again, I'm just going to be quite generous with the glue and go right up to those edges. And again, I then like to smooth out just the edges to make sure we haven't got any kind of pushing through. We can then line that up and just glue those on top of each other. I always turn them over as well just to make sure that I'm lining them up correctly. And then I use my beautiful tonic mug that I put all my things I need to hand and I just put that down on there just again for a couple of minutes to let that glue really start setting. We've then got our two side pieces and again we want to come in and fold those perforated or score lines. That's going to go there like that. And that one's going to go there. And you'll see at the bottom, we've got these little tabs. So we're actually going to glue the tabs to the squares. So I'm going to get my first tab and just glue that and again go right up to the edge and then just smooth it out. And what I like to do is turn everything over and then get that placement perfect. So right on that score 
and I'm just going to then press that and then again just give it a few minutes to really take and then we can do the same with the other side so again I'm going to add my glue and again I'm just going to smooth that but make sure that I'm covering that whole area glue it down and then turn it over and just make sure that I'm getting that placement nice and perfect and then again I can just leave that for a few minutes and allow everything to set so before I move on to the next part, you'll see that our side pieces have got two tabs either side. You want to fold those in and make sure that they sit in wood of our side panels because what we're actually going to do is glue the tab on the inside of our side panels so we can create a box. So I'm just going to get some glue and add that to the tab and again I'm going to smooth it out and make sure that I've gone right to the edge and I can then fold it inwards and then just hold that in place not for very long it only needs a minute, a minute and a half to start sticking. We can then add glue to the other side and again smooth that out, make sure we get the whole of the tab and then just glue that side in place as well. So now we need to do the other side and exactly the same again. I'm going to do one tab first and smooth that glue out and again I'm just going to hold that in place for a few minutes and allow it to really take and what I find works really well is if I get something like a kebab skewer or a dowel or even a lollipop stick I can really come in and just sort of work that and allow it to really stick Again, I can add glue to that last tab and really smooth it out. I can then come in with a lollipop stick or a wooden dowel or even just a, a wooden kebab skewer and just really kind of help that to stick. We can then put our handles together. We can then thread our handle pieces through. And then there is our beautiful box. And of course, we can then embellish this area here. So I'm actually just going to add some butterflies onto there. But what a cute little gift box. I absolutely love this file. It's so easy to change. You can make it larger if you want to. You can change the panel design so you can go with whatever you want. You can do this using a multitude of mixed media products and colours. This is great fun to make and they make really beautiful little gift boxes. I love looking through what everyone's made. So on Instagram, make sure you tag Tonic. I would love to see everyone's take on this little box because it is beautiful. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all for the next one. Bye.